Hey everyone, Jen here. In this short training, I'm going to cover the topic of crafting a high ticket offer message for LinkedIn. So one of the reasons I wanted to film this training is that a great offer message is absolutely critical for, for cold outreach. And yet it seems to be one of the hardest things to do. Something that people constantly message me about and ask me about is like, what should I say when I do an outreach message? And how can I position my outreach message in such a way that it's going to get a positive reply and, and book those calls? And yeah, it's basically foundational to everything we do. It's going to be foundational to how you connect with people, how you message people, how you reply to messages with people and how you handle um, the call with them. So really nutting out your off outreach offer message is really fundamental. So that's why I wanted to film this video and help you think about a few things. So essentially, you know, there's a few don'ts before we get into the do's for LinkedIn. So the rules of LinkedIn are definitely don't spam people. Um, with cold outreach, it's really easy to do that. And I'm sure you've been on the receiving end of just plenty of outreachy spammy messages where it's just connect, send you a sales pitch immediately. That's not the objective of this. We, we want to position you in terms of high value. Kind of tied to that point, we don't want to sell in your outreach message, which might sound counterintuitive because essentially what we're doing is trying to get leads for your business, but we're not selling in our outreach message. All we're trying to do is gain interest, interest in a piece of value that opens up the conversation and opens up a relationship. And it's in that relationship that you're able to sell. So we're not selling in our outreach message. We're opening a doorway for which we can walk through, create a relationship and start the selling process. Um, and certainly don't spray and pray. So the more specific we can be, um, the better. And in many cases, good selling is about who you eliminate more than who you include. So we don't, we certainly do not want to hit everyone with a, with a standard message. The first step of a really amazing offer is to really focus on solving a business problem and finding a business solution. Now, too many outreach messages are about methods, about processes, are about um, kind of tools or um, softwares and things like that. This is not a business solution and it's not, a it's not solving a business problem. This is your bridge or your pathway. You won't want to talk about your thing, your bridge or your pathway. You want to talk about the business solution. And that can be quite difficult to define. That's why an outreach offer message is something that's really worth really worth digging into. Too often we see outreach messages that are very fuzzy saying, oh, you know, we want to talk to you about the solutions that we can provide. What does that mean? What solutions can you provide? Can you dig deeper into that? And the best place to look for that is to look into your case studies, people that you've previously helped and draw out the very specific solutions that were created. So we're certainly not talking in, ter in terms of any features we're talking in terms of futures. So think of that. Don't talk, talk in features, talk in futures. I guess when we're technical and we're very passionate about our service or our, uh, our tool or our software or our particular method, it's very easy to start to talk about that. I can help you with SEO. I can help you with this SaaS product. I can help you with this coaching method. People don't really care about your method, but what they do care about is the outcome. They care about quitting that addictive behavior. They care about generating more business leads. They care about saving time or money. They care about, you know, simplifying processes. That's what they care about. The future is what they care about. The, the solution to a painful problem is what they care about. And then once you've got them interested in the solution, then you can introduce your method and that becomes a, um, a, future, a future conversation. The second step, which is often quite difficult, is to find the, the, the best decision maker. Um, within a company. So obviously companies can be kind of complicated. Do you go to the CEO? Do you go to the, another of the C-suite? Are you going to a managing director? Are you going to a head of department? Which decision maker are you trying to reach out to? The key to think about is who is the person that not only needs the solution, but has the money and the power to action a, a decision. So the larger the company you're going to, the more complex that will be because Often the person who needs the solution has to then talk to the person with the power and the, the budget and the decision-making ability. And so it becomes a multiple stakeholder conversation. 
Whereas if you're talking to smaller companies, you can go straight to the owner manager. They have the power and the decision making and they can make a decision very quickly. So that's why um, you know, smaller companies can be very agile and it's a very quick turnover process for your offer. Whereas the larger companies, really what you're trying to do is just secure a relationship and then use that relationship to navigate the internal relationships of that company to then land the big deal. But the slower deals are worth it because once you land a deal, you're likely to have that deal for, for many, many years. And so it's just a trade-off for time, time versus agility. But the ingredients of the, the key decision maker is obviously the person who feels the pain. It's not it's no use talking to a secretary or a staff member who's not really in need of the solution. It's just going to bypass them. You need someone who's conscious of the problem and wants to solve that problem and also has the budget. Um, so the, all of these ingredients are quite important. Now, we kind of covered this earlier about talking in concrete terms of results, but it's very easy to say, let me talk about myself. Well, sorry, let me introduce myself. You know, I've got this Harvard educated background, you know, years in the industry, and I'm very passionate about this topic. And people will just stop listening. They really, really don't actually care. Um, it's very, it's more important to talk about the benefits and the results to them. So we're all talking in terms of what it is for the other person and then backing that up with our expertise and um, evidence of our being able to solve that problem for them. So as much as you can talk in terms of tangible outcomes, outputs, results and rewards as possible. So for example, if you have a case study of being able to help uh, your client land six-figure deals or multiple six-figure deals, now you may not be able to do that for every single client, but it's a case study of results. And so that becomes the language that you can use talking to future clients. Or if you've helped clients double their sales volume or increase their pipeline by a million dollars, use these tangible metrics to paint the picture of what is possible. Um, so find out the very specific results that you've created and then use that in your storytelling and your outreach messaging. The more tangible, the better, basically. It helps people really grab onto the offer message. So instead of, you, you can see the difference. Instead of saying, oh, let's talk about the benefits to your business, we can talk about, you know, we've worked with clients to reduce the risk to them at entering a new market by up to 80% concrete, tangible outcome. Definitely drop names. So if you've worked with big brands and you're allowed to talk about their name, talk about individuals that you've worked with, then definitely use that. It helps build your credibility of, of that offer message and how you've been able to achieve those results. Now, when I talk about, you know, your outreach message shouldn't sell, you shouldn't be spammy, you shouldn't be pitchy. What we are offering is value. And whatever value is in, in the minds of your target audience. So you can offer anything. So like a, a free webinar, a free masterclass, you could offer a free consultation with yourself, which sounds like a sales conversation, but it's framed as a free consultation. You can be offering uh, an audit of what they've already done for free so that you use that conversation to then leverage um, business. Basically, what's called a lead magnet is any of those things, which essentially it's a low barrier to entry conversation, which means you then have the right to understand them more. You have a platform then to sell them your business from there. One good reason about offering these things up front, it's a little bit like walking into you know, a department store and someone's offering you a free sample of perfume. They might be offering you a free taste of some wine. They might be offering you, a, you know, a toothpick of, of cheese or, or salami. You know, they're getting you to taste and, and smell and see and those experiences so that you're then more inclined to, to, to try the real, the real deal. So with our cold outreach, we just think of ourselves as walking around a large conference room and, and offering out free samples to people, introducing ourselves, getting to know people. And you're going to get a bunch of leads from those conversations of people who are like, mm, yeah, I'm, I really like this, you know, flavor or this smell. I, I really like that. Let me take your business card. Let me get to know you better. Let's have another, another conversation and another conversation. And it's from there that the, the business conversations are opening up. 
Um, I like to add add a softener. This is an optional one um, to our outreach conversations, you know, just like, hi, you haven't met me. I would, I'd love to offer you something for free, you know, a free consultation to help you solve your problems. Add a no worries clause. If, if you've got this sorted, no worries. Really nice to meet you. I like to add that because it if, if I'm approaching people cold and they have this problem solved, you can get a negative kickback. Like, hey, why do you think we need your help? So I add a softener, which is like, yep, if you've got it solved, really great to hear that. And so it kind of takes away that sting of, of offering help when potentially they, they're not even in need of help. And it's just one of the things of cold outreach that we never really know until we offer. And so it's we got to offer it to lots of people. Not everybody's going to want it. And so you just add a softener. With GDPR, it, it's very sensitive and dependent upon regions. So all I can say is like look into the data privacy um, rules of your region and your area as to your, your liberty to cold outreach to people by email. Definitely on LinkedIn, if you can get a connection, you're able to message someone and you are able to actually send emails, which are messages to people that you're not even connected to. So LinkedIn as a social media platform allows you to connect and message people from an email perspective itself definitely worth looking into GDPR for your region and, and finding out what, what, you, what you feel comfortable to do and what your policy is on that. So what does a good outreach message, offer message look like? Well, in my case, my offer message is, hi, I help B2B consultants to generate 10K to 100K clients within three months using LinkedIn and cold outreach. That's my, my power statement of the results I create for the demographic that I create. It's not really about me. It's about the results I've created. And what I offer people is a complimentary strategy session to talk about how they could solve that problem using LinkedIn and email. I found that very effective. I also offer out free training, pre-recorded webinars that I've already created. I've and an ebook. I offer links to a whole portal of free training where people can go through that at their own pace, which seems very, very popular. And I've had clients opt into the free training, go through all of my training, and then come back, book a call, and be become a paying client of mine. So offering up the value is just a way of getting people into your universe, developing a relationship with them, and essentially establishing that platform from which you're, a you're able to position yourself to sell. So if I'd recommend that you um, reach out, you ask me any questions that you like, add me on LinkedIn, Jen Bishop Consulting, send me an email, Jen at Jen Bishop Consulting, send me your outreach offer message. How are you currently messaging people? I'm very happy to give you a few tips by email or messenger, or you can just look me up at Jen Bishop Consulting and you can book a call there and very happy to talk to you about how you can be building your LinkedIn and email outreach strategy. All right, thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next video.